Hi guys, Carrie DeBerg at the Racine Heritage Museum. I'm going to be talking to you today about one of Racine's most notorious people, Martin Secor. I'm standing here in front of our Secor exhibit. Um, this is actually an exhibit of many Racine manufacturers. You can see we have a corn sheller. We have parquet flooring by the SC Johnson Company. We have a fanning mill and we have some baskets. Um, but today we're going to be focusing on Secor, and you can see one of the trunks here that uh, his company made. And I want to tell you a little bit about his life because it was very interesting. Um, so Secor was one of our Bohemian immigrants. His name was Martin Matthias Secor, and he came here in 1851 at the age of 10. Uh, he began making trunks in his kitchen in 1862. And what started out as a very small business eventually grew in six years to a business that spanned three buildings. And that eventually grew to be eight buildings. They employed 250 people and they made 100,000 trunks per year. So the Secor company was actually the largest producer of trunks in the nation, coming right here from Racine. So Mr. Secor was a tall, he was about six foot tall man. Um, he always wore a flower in his lapel and he always walked around with a gold cane and he had a big booming voice. And most people really loved him. He was a very generous man. He was definitely um, proud of his Bohemian heritage and wanted to help his fellow Bohemian immigrants. And so he made a point to always employ Bohemians most of his workforce was from Bohemia, and it was said that Bohemians could come only having to know three words, where is Secor, and they could find a job for themselves. So um, he did give them employment, he paid them very well. He instituted a 13th month paycheck, meaning he would give them a bonus each year, a whole month's pay, which was very unusual in those times. And 95% of his employees owned their own homes. So um, he definitely made sure that they had a good standard of living and were taken care of. Um, he was known for his home. As I said, he always had a flower in his lapel and his home uh, was very opulent. Um, it had a beautiful grounds. It was called the Park of China Asters. So it was known for all the beautiful flowers and the fountain. Um, he had many, many animals. Um, peacocks, a coyote, a monkey, um, lots of different animals for pets. Um, and at one point he had 28 people living in his home in 1880, uh, most of whom were Bohemians. So he was known for, for helping them out whenever they needed a place to stay or any kind of help whatsoever. He was also known for his financial generosity. He donated $7,000 to the building of the first city hall. He donated to the hospital, to the Taylor Orphan Asylum, and when a tornado struck Racine uh, that killed many people, he paid for the funeral expenses for the people that perished in that tornado. So um, he was definitely known for that kind of generosity as well. He was mayor of Racine in 1884 and then again in 1888. And while he was mayor, he instituted the first paved streets in Racine. So that was one of the big changes that happened while he was mayor. Another thing that happened while he was mayor was there was actually an assassination attempt on him. Um, it turns out a man by the name of Frank Palika, who was a bookkeeper in Secor's company, wanted to start his own trunk company. And so he and John Jambor got the idea to string a wire across Secor's driveway and when his carriage uh, wheel would cross the wire, it would set off a bomb. Well, unfortunately for John Jambor, the bomb didn't go off right away when Secor's carriage crossed, and he went to check it out, and the bomb exploded on him. And so John Jambor and Frank Palika were caught, and thankfully uh, Secor was not injured, but John Jambor definitely was. Um, so he is the only mayor that has ever had an assassination attempt, thankfully. We don't have a history of that happening often. Um, so in 1890, he purchased the McClurg building, and that's the building at 245 Main Street. Right now it has Divino Gelato on the first floor, 
And when he bought it, he made it the first Bohemian Bank of America. Um, he wanted to have a bank for Bohemians because a lot of immigrants found it difficult to um, have banks do business with them. A lot of times businesses or banks did not want to do business with immigrants because they weren't sure if they could trust them or if they would have the money to, to make good on their loans. So he started this Bank of, of America, but first Bohemian Bank of America, and he actually had Turkish baths installed in the bank, which is a very odd amenity for a bank. Um, they were white marble Turkish baths so that his customers could come in, cash their check, and get cleaned up on a Friday and possibly have dinner at his house because he very often had his employees come to his house for dinner. Those white marble Turkish baths remained in that building until 1941. Um, so Martin Matthias Secor passed away in 1911, and he did live a very um, controversial but mostly well-remembered life of being generous and doing good things for people. Um, but he definitely made a splash with his choice for his tombstone. He wanted his tombstone to read, and it does say this, the world is my home, to do good is my religion, why did a good God create a bad devil? And so he created a lot of controversy with that tombstone, even after he was gone. Um, people were very upset about that, but that's what it says, and that's what it says still today. So that is all I have for you today about Martin Matthias Secor. Um, he was such a colorful character. We were really excited to talk to you about him today. Make sure you come back on Monday and we're going to have another video with Chris and Allison. Um, but in the meantime, you can check out all of our videos on our YouTube channel. Make sure you follow our Instagram channel, which also um, has a lot of the pictures that we're posting. Um, I will be posting some pictures today of a little bit closer look of the trunk and also of his home. So thanks for tuning in, stay safe, and we'll see you later. Bye.